In section 4.2, we're going to be looking at atoms and quantized energy. So what do atoms have to do with this energy? We talked about electromagnetic spectrum, electromagnetic radiation. So how do atoms and elements specifically relate to that energy? So yes, that is Ant-Man. So going quantum and the quantum realm, the quantum level, what does that even mean? So matter can only gain or lose energy in small amounts, in quantized sort of packets of energy. So the term quantum was discovered by physicist Max Planck. And in his research, he realized that the quantization of energy was being released or emitted in specific amounts. So a specific amount of energy would be absorbed or released. So when you hear the term quantized, it's referring to a specific amount. So a quantum is going to be the minimum amount of energy that can be gained or lost by an atom. And when you see this in relation to Bohr models, you're going to have the quantum equal to an N. So when you see N equals 1, that's referring to the quantum level 1. So when you see something that's incandescent, then it's going to be emitting color due to higher temperatures. And it is turning colors it's releasing colors and the reason why it does that is because it has been absorbing energy it's absorbing quanta of energy specific amounts of energy and it kind of um, goes up it increases incrementally so if you think about when you put water in the microwave like if you're going to heat up some water to make a cake or something the water is going to end up getting hotter and it seems like it magi magically just gets hotter over a minute or two but it doesn't it absorbs a small amount of energy and then a little bit more energy a little bit more energy so it will absorb quanta of energy small amounts incrementally so what's actually happening to the atoms as this occurs? So when you have, um, let's say, hydrogen, if you think about a Bohr model for hydrogen, so this is happy little hydrogen. Hydrogen is going to be your smallest element. It has one proton, one electron. It doesn't have any neutrons. So in the ground state, this is going to be the lowest energy state. So this is going to be just normal, happy little hydrogen. So this is our Bohr model, and it, this is showing us its sort of lowest energy state. So as electrons absorb energy, um, they're going to be able to sort of bounce those electrons to another shell, to another quanta. And remember, this can be represented by N. And that is going to end up sort of bouncing outward, uh, being bumped up to the next quanta. And then when it is going to um, be released, when it sort of de-escalates and is the electron isn't excited anymore then it will emit light and as it's emitting that light um, it will be returning back down to its ground state so as it gains energy it's going to be going to this excited state it's going to increase to the next in the next uh, quantum shell and then as it is releasing that energy it will emit light and it'll be going back down to a lower shell it's going to be going back down to a lower energy level so electrons that are moving from n3 or more down to n2 are going to be emitting visible light but if the electron is only moving from n2 to n1 it's going to be uv light so you're not going to be able to see that really being released unless you're using a UV light to detect that, like fluorescence of certain types of minerals. So when the atoms or electrons relax, they go back down to the ground state and it releases energy in the form of light. But remember, not all light is visible, so it may not be that Roy G. Biv that we're familiar with as something that we can see in visible light. So the color of the light that's released is going to be dependent on the amount of energy that the photon originally had, that that particle had in order to sort of get bumped up to the next quantum level. So if we look at hydrogen, hydrogen is really important because it was used for a lot of research, it's really common, and it's something that it, we're all familiar with. It's the smallest element, and so it's been researched a lot. But as 
Um, we're looking at the Bohr model here, and even with Rutherford's research, hydrogen was very important to sort of the development of this understanding of spectra and the different quanta of energy. So if you see this diagram here, we know the Bohr model of hydrogen looks like this. So we have our, our proton in the center and the nucleus our positive nucleus, and then we have our negative electron. And our one electron is going to orbit on that first orbital shell, that first level, and that's going to be our n equals 1. And that is going to be just the ground state, sort of the relaxed state of hydrogen. So if hydrogen gets, um, if that electron of hydrogen gets excited and it uh, sort of bounces up to the next level, for example, then it'll be going from N1 to N2. And it can actually, with hydrogen, there are up to seven different quantum levels that have been observed. So if it uh, continues to get excited and absorbs even more energy, then it can bounce up to um, subsequent energy levels. And so what we see here are a couple of different terms, Balmer series, and this is just a reference to the ability for hydrogen to emit colored light as it's being sort of relaxed. Energy in those electrons is decreasing back down towards the ground state. And then the Lyman series is going to be the ability for hydrogen to emit ultraviolet light, so that's not going to be visible light, and that's just going to be from some of the lower shells uh, back down to N1. And the Passion series is a reference to infrared being emitted. So each of these series that we see listed here is just dependent on the type of light that is emitted and from which orbital shell that you see the light being emitted from.